In my last video, I did an open the box on the Xfinity Flex. At the end of that video, and a couple of times through that video, quite honestly, I promised you a first use video. Today is that day. This is the first use video for the Xfinity Flex. If you'd like to be reminded of when I release new videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. For now, let's go to the workbench and check out the first use of the Xfinity Flex. Okay, let's uh, move on over to the test bench here. I've already got the Cloner Alliance Box Pro connected. Uh, it did go ahead and get everything set up with the video inputs. Now what we're going to do is plug in our Xfinity Flex. So um, this is a direct pass through to the HDMI monitor. We are going to plug this into the HDMI TV port. In the last video, you may remember that we talked about the input here. There is an HDMI input, but we really don't know what that is. We may research that a little bit. So this is a first use. So this has never been turned on before. So if this doesn't work, we'll blame Xfinity for build quality at this point. Okay. Uh, the small HDMI cable is going to make that a little hard to keep there. Next thing we need to do is get some power. All right, that should be enough. So we'll go ahead and plug. And again, the, the unique thing about this was this was a USB-C cable, which I, again, really like that it had a modern connector. So we'll plug that in there. Uh, it'd be interesting also to note if you, we can do anything else with that USB. My guess is no, but you never know when you start really looking at these things. All right, we'll plug this back into my power strip back here. And uh, there does not appear to be an on off. So we do have a light right here that comes on. While we're doing this, we'll go ahead and pull the tab off so that that will activate our remote and our batteries. And we'll give that a second. In the meantime, let's take a look at our setting up. Set up your TV, activate your remote. We did that. Wait for the LED light. Uh, it says the LED light will blink blue three times as your voice remote powers up. Oh, there we go. Looks like, so that's been powered up. So we're good there. Follow the on-screen prompt. There we go. Looks like we've got this now. Um, so what I will do, there we go. You know, we've got our set your language, use our remotes here. I'm going to assume that these are standard remotes like we would find on most streaming boxes. And they are. Um, it is. It appears to be using IR, though. I was hoping there would be a Bluetooth connection, but right now, at least, unless there's something else in, in the setup, it's just IR. So we're going to have to. I'm going to have to hold my hands down here in a weird direction. So please confirm your language. We want to make sure that we confirm English US. We're going to see if we can set up your network. Now it's probably not going to automatically connect because I don't have an Xfinity uh, box uh, Wi-Fi router in my home so it's probably not going to be able to connect i assume i'm going to have to find my home network and connect okay now we will go ahead and set this to record let's go ahead and turn our recording on i always have problems finding the buttons on this thing because i've not used it enough okay so it shows we are recording and it shows up here. Okay, so now we will be capturing everything we see on the screen. So let's go ahead and connect to my home network, which is this one. And I'm going to get in front of the screen here while I do my password. Let's go back to confirm. You're about to connect to a new network, you betcha. Welcome, connecting to an entertainment experience. Yeah, it's been an experience so far, that's for sure. Especially with this remote. And while that's loading up, let's see if there's anything else. Wait for the LED, select the voice button. Just a moment, we're checking a few things. I'm checking a few things too. Try a voice command. We'll try that here in a minute. We can't really do it right now. Please verify your phone number. Oh my goodness, let's verify our phone number. That way I don't have everybody calling me out there on the YouTubes. I'm an old guy, I can call it the YouTubes. Name your device. What shall we name this? I am not going to use custom name because that would take forever to program that in. So let's, I'm kind of downstairs right now. So let's, there we go, basement. Let's use our basement. 
a device was successfully named. Thank you for that. It's optimizing for surround sound. Not going to have great surround sound on this. This is a, an old Vizio. This is only a 720p Vizio TV. It was kind of perfect for this. Um, I could have put it on a larger, but I wanted to sit down and kind of hook everything up. We'll, I'll probably, uh, this will end up on a larger screen later on. Optimized resolution, yes. Still can't believe this is IR and not Bluetooth. I, was, I had real hopes for this because this is a really well-built um, device. Got the splash screen here. Let's set up your new remote. All right, press and hold the Xfinity Info button for five seconds. That's this one right here. We're going to hold that for five seconds. I don't know if I need to point it or not. Let's see what we're doing. Um, maybe this is going to do the Bluetooth thing, so let's try that. So hold for five seconds. Wait for the remote light to change from red to green. That is not happening. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to hold the Xfinity and info buttons. Who knows what I just did to that remote then? Okay, let's try it. All right, we are on green. There we go. Complete pairing. Ooh, now, now we're rocking with Bluetooth. That turns the infrared off, so we do not need that uh, infrared. So I should be able to hold this back here now. Would you like to control your TV using your remote? You betcha. Let's do that. What brand? Um, let's just scroll down here. Vizio should be on here. There we go. And please follow these steps to control. P press and hold the Xfinity and mute button. Uh, type the five digit code. One, one, seven, five, eight. I think we're really finding out why this thing is important. Okay, say all set. Let's check if that works. Try using your, the volume. Let's see if we can adjust our volume. Oh, now that's pretty nice. So that was very easy. Um, so I do like that. So it works. So we'll say, yes, it works. Uh, would you like to control your audio receiver? I don't have an audio receiver, so we'll just say not now. Now that's nice because uh, on many of the televisions I have, I do have a separate sound bar uh, with the TV that are different brands. So that's going to come in handy. Okay, we've got a blank screen here. We'll give that a second. And there we go. Let's get started. Sign in to your apps. Oh my, I can't, I can't even imagine using this to sign into apps. Um, pretty easy experience to get turned on. Uh, about the same as most Roku devices or Android TVs. Uh, seems to be working pretty good. Let's go ahead and look at today, see what we have. Here's our weather right now in Columbus, which is where I am, 66 degrees. That's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and go back. We have um, the different channels that we can view here. Let's view all apps and see what we have. Here's the Peacock channel, uh, which is included with the Flex for free with no cost. So this is pro that's probably the only advantage I see, but let's go ahead and see what we have. We have Zumo, we have YouTube, uh, we have Tubi, we have Pluto. That's interesting that they have Pluto. Uh, digital resources to aid your service. That's interesting, customer service tools, ESPN, Pandora, YouTube Kids, iHeart, NPR, Cheddar, Tastemade, Many of the popular um, apps are on here. Here's our video apps, HBO, Stars. There's the Peacock. We're going to bring the Peacock up because I've not used that and probably not many people have seen that. So we'll pull that up. Showtime, Epics, Hits, all the stuff. The only thing that it doesn't have, and I did research this online, is it does not include a lot of the live streaming channels. As a matter of fact, I think it only includes the Xfinity live streaming. So I can't use YouTube TV on this, which immediately for me makes this a non-starter uh, for local. So uh, I'm not sure how I will use this device. Again, I think the only reason I'm going to use this device is to gain free access to shows that may appear on the Peacock. And I do know that the Peacock is going to have some unique programming for that channel to include a new Battlestar Galactica show. So that might be uh, something that this is the only device I pull up just so I can watch the latest um, version of the new Battlestar Galactica show. So, hey, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what happens. This is the Peacock. So the Peacock coming soon. Look for a notification. Oh, so we can't even watch anything right now. So thanks Xfinity for pushing the Peacock. The Peacock is not even available for this device yet. Let's bring up uh, something that does not require me to log in because I do not want to go through that process. And that would be Pluto TV. So let me come back up here. Let's go ahead and pull up Pluto. Um, no indications as you go through the menus, no blips and bloops or anything like that. Here's Pluto. This normally does not require any kind of login. You're entering a third party. You can get some info if you want to know about that. 
So this is, as you all know, Pluto TV is kind of a live streaming, so it could be useful for that. Let's see if our, let me go ahead and turn the volume down here on this. Let's go ahead and change the channel and see what it looks like. There we go. There's our, let's see if we can pull up a movie here. We won't stay on here too long. I don't want to get a copyright violation. So here's Pluto TV, uh, the latest Bond film playing. You can see that. Um, now I can't use the channels, but I should be able to move through. Yeah, we can just kind of go through with our menu controls. It seems a little flaky. It's taking a little bit longer than it does on my Roku or Android TV. Usually when I change channels, it's, it's immediate. So I don't know if that's a feature. Uh, I'm in the same general location. There is an access point for this device less than six feet away from us. So it should have really good uh, connection. So anyway, you can see the video. Video is clean. It's pretty good on this Video 720p. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back to. Uh, I'm going to grab, get out of this app here, and let's see if I can figure out how to get out of this app. I guess we're going to have to hit the home button. So let's hit the home button. Where's the home button? It's a good question. Where is the home button? Hit the Xfinity button. There we go. So the Xfinity button will get you back to this main page. Yeah, it says I was watching, or it says it's on. Looks like I've been watching that, but I obviously did not get that far in, so that's not that's not right. Let's see what happens when we hit live TV. So these are the apps for live TV, but again, uh, I shouldn't have access to any of these, I don't believe, unless it's through Pluto. Some of these may be through Pluto. That looks like a Pluto channel. Let's try that. Oh, it's, okay, so this one's going to go through Zumo. So that's available on Zumo and Pluto TV. So you never know where you're going to go, I guess. And I think that's kind of the point. It'll just pick if you do a search where that's coming from. So there's this old house. Let's get off of that. So let's see what's available in the customer service tools. Get your account information, view and pay your bill. That's kind of nice. Um, you know, probably should be included. Here's your restart. Okay, so some of this. Here we go. So here's some of your... Um, things to help with settings. Let's see what it says. Here's a system refresh, check for outage. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see if I have an outage. You're entering a third party. Looks like we're all clear. That's actually kind of nice. As an Xfinity customer, I could always bring this up and, and check on outages. Uh, I do like that. But again, I'm, I'm a cord cutter, so I don't have cable. The only thing I'm using Xfinity for is the internet. We're obviously not using phone, so that's interesting. Let's go back uh, to the main menu one more time, and let's see if we can find something that resembles settings. Uh, there it is, right there, settings. And it looks like I have a, a blue dot. I'm wondering if there might not be an update available. Let's check it out. We've got seven new notifications. Let's see what they say. You are entering a third party. You're entering. Oh, these are all the notifications from um, entering those third party apps. That's interesting. We'll go back from here. See, how do I go back? Oh, back button. There we go. Uh, here's my account, apps and subscriptions. Um, you can sign in. Here's preferences. Let's go ahead and take a look at preferences general. Uh, prefer best available resolution is on. Watch history is on. That's nice. You could turn that off if you wanted to. Recommended based on history. You can turn that off. Autoplay next episode. That's a nice feature. Um, here's the time when it will update. I still want to check and see if there's an update. I'm curious about that. You can looks like you can change notifications. I am going to turn my notifications off. Um, I just don't think I need those notifications on this device. Device settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Do have closed captioning, that's nice. Video display, uh, modify settings such as zoom and video output resolution, audio, we can change that. Connect Bluetooth headphones. Now that's interesting because that should, in theory, allow us to watch um, from this device with a blue set, Bluetooth headset and turn the volume off on the TV and then just use the volume from there. So that could be nice if you're trying not to disturb the person next to you while you're watching TV. Have uh, device lights. Uh, let's check out the device lights. Let's see what's going on here. We have a brightness one to three. Let's see if it changes it. It does. So three. And I'm going to keep that on because uh, with the light that we have, that's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And let's go back. Remote settings. Let's see what we have here. Oh, this is nice. Uh, here's your battery level for your remote. Your voice control is on. We're going to try that here in a minute. Uh, using your voice remote. Well, let's just do that. Let's see what happens. The new X1 remote is here. All right, we've got an X1 remote. I uh, don't know what an X1 voice remote is, but I'm sure that's exciting for Xfinity and Comcast. Let's see if we're as excited about it as they are. So what can I say? 
press the microphone key and say, what can I say? Well, I guess we should. Hmm, nice little beep. What can I say? What can I say? Search for shows, find stranger things, uh, watch Vikings. No, just curious. What's the weather? Now to say that's bad, uh, knowing that this device will actually display weather and it can't do something as simple as what's the weather and display that, that's pretty bad. Find stranger things. I'm always leery about these can things that they tell us. That's what I thought. It's just going to come up and, and tell you about it. Um, let's try another show. Find Star Trek. So that's nice. It does give us a couple of different ways that we can watch the various shows. Here's a search all. Uh, that's not bad. I'm, I, this is, it just seems very limited in what you can do. Let's see if we can go back and get back to our screen that tells us what else we can do. So watch Vikings to search for your favorite uh, movies and shows. Let's see what the next screener says. Kick back and listen. Uh, search for artists, start listening to music. Oh, now that's kind of interesting. Let's, let's give it a shot. Play Boston. No results. Play music by Boston. Something's not quite right. So what did they say? Play country music on Pandora or show me Katy Perry. Okay, well, let's try that. Show me Boston. Now that'd be interesting because that could be a city too. No results. Show me Katy Perry. That would not be my choice, by the way. And there's some options. So that's very limited too. This is no Alexa. This is no Google Voice assistant. This is whatever Xfinity is using. I have no earthly idea, but it is, it's very limited. Let's go back. Play rock and roll. Okay, so this gave me a movie and Sesame Street, but I still don't have music. So we're just going to say this. Play rock and roll on Pandora. So at least we're getting it to load the Pandora app. It's getting my music. Looks like Pandora is the supported option here. This is not the music I would probably listen to or classify as rock. Uh, let's go ahead and turn up the volume here. go back anymore. I'm stuck here. But it is, it does say uh, rock and roll radio. That sure sounds like country to me, but uh, that's me. So I'm going to stop this. All right. And then we'll go back to the Xfinity menu area. Let's see if we can get some information about this device. So here's notices. Um, here's the battery information. The release, ver the release version is uh, 112. Well, wow, that's interesting, uh, which was released on the 14th. So the, it updated Obviously, it updated when we turned it on. There was some time lag there, so that was probably what was occurring. Uh, hard to tell, made, in lo made with love in Philadelphia. That was on the box, as a matter of fact, and during the open box, open the box, I did not point that out. Uh, but it is made with love in Philadelphia, and I believe that's the headquarters for Xfinity. Am I wrong on that? Or Comcast? I'm not sure, but uh, that's where that is. Here's our uh, device name. No information about what kind of operating system is being used or anything. And let's, uh, let's do one more screen here and then uh, we will put this to bed. Um, let's see, let's stay informed. Let's look at some educational resources. Voyager, the Grand Tour from Space Probe, Season 1, Episode 1. So this is from Curiosity Stream. That's nice. It's free. So there is some free things built into that, which looks pretty nice. Again, I'm going to get off that pretty quickly. Let's look down here at some of the, the free to me options here. So here's some free movies that are available through Comcast, NBC, Universal, I'm sure. This is all licensed from them. Um, so free to me. Here's popular, some popular series. Uh, if you have a need to watch The Bachelor. Now this isn't, I can't believe Game of Thrones is free to me. 70, 73 episodes. That's interesting. I have not watched Game of Thrones, I know. Strike. It's unusual. Somebody who hasn't seen it. But uh, evidently that is available for free. Um, so again, I think... As I think about how I'm going to use this device, it's going to be to get some of those shows that I don't have access to on other streaming services. 
uh, and I see this just being a secondary device for those for that use case. Who is this thing for though? I have to assume it's just for folks who maybe are not as technologically versed in streaming platforms, want something easy, like the convenience of Xfinity, just giving you a device. They're going to take care of it. If something happens to it, you can send it back. They'll swap it out. It's going to be that traditional kind of cable box experience. And I think that's that's who Xfinity is going after. That is not me. So again, this will be a, a, probably a secondary device. So here's some more free Here's some free music. Let's see, a lot of free music, evidently, uh, but we couldn't get to it. Oh, it's using Vivo, so that makes sense. We do have some billboard charts, live from home. Uh, that's kind of nice. Ambient uh, music, let's bring up, uh, how about a, let's do some studying beats because it's almost finals week for my students. Ambient moods, that's a nice display. Yeah, very nice. So if you had this in a, large living room with a large sc uh, screen, large TV. This would be really nice to have up on the screen listening to some music. So, you know, there are some nice things about this. It's it's just gonna take me a little bit to, I, I fear because it's a secondary device, I'll just forget about it and always be using a primary. I think what I'm gonna do is plug this as a secondary device in my office because as I'm working virtually, uh, I will try and use this a little more regularly to see how it works. Again, I'm gonna miss my live channels. I have YouTube TV on a um, Android TV box in my office. So it, again, if I want live news, I don't think I can get that right now uh, unless I had a live package with Xfinity. Let's go back home, there we go. That was weird, I couldn't pause it. Uh, I'm sure I could have muted it, but I wanted to pause it and stop there. Let's, uh, let's check one more thing. Let's see what's under the new here. So these are new movies that are available to rent and own. April calendar, Xfinity movie premiere. Movies from the theater straight to you. So you can, uh, not surprisingly, you can evidently rent directly from here or buy. So if I wanted to buy this, uh, I'm not sure I would ever buy from Xfinity because I want to have that available on multiple devices. And uh, I don't believe that's the case. I don't think this is not a movies to go I don't believe it is. I would have to check, but I don't believe this is a movies to go uh, compatible streaming purchase service. So I would never buy from here because I would be locked in right here to this device or one of their TV boxes. I would always get it somewhere else and do it that way. So I, that'll never be used right there. And uh, let me go back again to music. Um, take a look here while we were there and Really nice music selection. I can I can see myself spending time in the music selection. Here's a, what do we have? Classic albums. Now this is nice. A uh, little Beatles Abbey Road. Very, and that was Amazon. That's interesting. This is Amazon Music. Um, so it's using Amazon Music as their default for music. And you can see here, it wants me to enter that code. And I do not have an Amazon Music service. I do have Amazon Prime, which would probably give me access to that. Um, that particular album, but maybe not. So, okay. I would assume this is an NBC news source since NBC is owned, or I'm not sure what the relationship is, who owns who, Comcast owns NBC Universal or vice versa. I don't remember what that is. Uh, but let's see if we can determine what news source they're using. It's taking a while to load, that's for sure. It says from the internet, here's an ad from T-Mobile. So I have to wonder if this is coming from... Supposing we hit the body. Okay, so it's NBC News now. It's coming from there. So that, that would explain uh, where they're getting their news sources. And that makes complete sense. This is, a, um, again, a subsidiary of the larger conglomerate that makes up NBC, Comcast, Xfinity, and all those. So that makes sense that they would use that. Uh, and, uh, oh, let's, let's try search. It does have the, the search faster. Let's see if... Uh, I'm just going to type in some letters and see what we get. I don't even know... If, there you go. Um, let's see, is there anything DEJ? Deja vu, there you go. So this search is pretty good here. I do like this, uh, a couple of letters and you start to see results, so that's pretty nice there. That concludes this first use video of the Xfinity Flex. I hope you enjoyed this video and the previous video, which was an open the box. 
If you'd like to receive notifications of future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Also, be sure to check out my blog at stephencombs.com, where I have tips and technology tricks on all types of things, such as 3D printing, Chrome OS, Android, Linux, you name it. If it's technology and gadget related, there's probably something there you'll find of interest. So make sure you check out the blog. And again, look forward for future videos where I will supplement those blog posts with content I think you are going to enjoy. So thanks for watching.